Welcome to this PowerPoint video about minerals. This video was prepared by Buena Vista Museum of Natural History and Science. We invite you to visit us at 2018 Chester Avenue in downtown Bakersfield, California. Please visit our website, www.buenavistamuseum.org. This video is presented to help our patrons learn about minerals. Minerals are of critical importance to life as we know it. Our geology section has displays of rocks, minerals, fluorescent minerals, cut and polished rocks and gemstones, petrified wood, and meteorites. Most of the photos you see in this video are crystalline mineral specimens from our museum displays. There are several terms that scientists use to define hard substances that come from the earth, such as rocks, minerals, and stones. Pictured is our touch and feel board of rocks. A rock is a natural substance made of one or more minerals. Rocks make up nearly all of the Earth's crust. Some common rocks are sandstone, granite, basalt, marble, and schist. So, what is a mineral? A mineral is a naturally occurring combination of elements that has a definite crystalline structure and a definite chemical composition. Naturally occurring means that no man-made substances qualify as minerals. This photo shows the rock, granite, is made up of the minerals, quartz, feldspar, biotite mica, and hornblende or augite. It has been said that if you can't grow it, like a plant or an animal, or produce it as a fluid, like oil, gas, or water, then it started out as a mineral. Some animals possess the ability to create minerals. For instance, animals can synthesize the minerals quartz or calcite out of ocean water to make shells. Crystalline structure means the geometric arrangement of atomic particles. Every mineral possesses a crystalline structure. Even the needle-like clusters of the mineral crocoite are intergrown crystals. Crocoite is composed of the elements lead, chromium, and oxygen. The upper photo shows two cubes of purple fluorite. The definite chemical composition of a fluorite molecule is one calcium atom and two fluorine atoms that arrange into a cubic shape. The red and orange balls pictured show that shape. However, rarely do we get to see that crystalline structure. Crystals like to grow into open spaces to display their unrestrained shape and most of the minerals in our displays show that beautiful crystalline structure. But most of the time, crystal shapes are difficult to recognize because they grow into other crystals, are too tiny to see, or are broken or worn away in the Earth's crust. So don't worry about determining crystal structure. You're unlikely to see it anyway. The classic vision of a crystal is something having pointed tips like these small white calcite crystals nesting in a larger purple amethyst cluster. The crystals come in multiple shapes and can form at different times. This specimen shows the amethyst crystals formed first and then were later covered by the calcite crystals. Examining physical properties can help identify minerals. These physical characteristics include properties such as cleavage, hardness, weight, also known as specific gravity, luster, color, and streak. You can often identify a mineral simply by holding it in your hand. Calcite, the pale gray crystals pictured, are fairly lightweight and soft. However, tiny, vivid blue, purple, and gold crystals of chalcopyrite can also be seen in this specimen. The chalcopyrite crystals are harder and heavier than the calcite crystals. More extensive laboratory analysis can help with tiny samples or other difficult to identify specimens. These laboratory analyses include testing chemical properties, melting temperature, and optical properties. 94 naturally occurring elements combine to give us an estimated 6,500 different minerals. This photo shows cubes of pyrite that grew together. Pyrite is a mix of iron and sulfur. As you can see, pyrite is a lustrous, brassy, 
gold-colored metallic mineral. Pyrite can be found in rocks that also possess gold. However, pyrite's similarities with real gold stop there. Pyrite is still known as fool's gold. There are a handful of natural solid substances that don't have a definite crystalline structure, such as opal and obsidian. These are called mineraloids rather than minerals. Pictured is the beautiful volcanic glass known as obsidian crafted into a heart. In early civilizations, minerals were important to humans. Minerals served as items of economic trade, such as gold, silver, turquoise, salt, and borax thousands of years ago. Pictured is the Marie Louise diadem, a crown from 19th century Europe made of diamonds, silver, and turquoise. Originally, emeralds occupied the spots now filled with turquoise. Minerals have also been historically mined for utilitarian reasons, such as stone walls and spear points. Because they can be colorful and unusual, a few minerals have been thought to possess mystical or magical powers. Today, minerals are used in jewelry, construction, medicines, healthcare, coinage, batteries, high technology, dinnerware, fertilizers, and thousands of other ways. Pictured is one of our display cases. Minerals form in different geologic environments. Some countries, such as the United States, are rich in many minerals. However, even the U.S. has to import certain critical minerals. Most minerals form underground at temperatures and pressures higher than what we see at the Earth's surface. Thus, activities near the Earth's surface often greatly alter minerals. Physical erosion by gravity, friction, sunlight, water, and ice break up rocks and minerals. Water and acid attack rocks and minerals chemically. These physical and chemical processes can form new minerals as well. One of the fun optical properties that can help identify a few minerals is fluorescence. Shining ultraviolet light waves often makes minerals fluoresce unusual colors such as the bright green, pink, blue, or orange you see in this slide. Taking an ultraviolet light out in the desert at night to find minerals can be great fun. Watch for a new museum video dedicated to our fluorescent minerals. This photo shows a huge cluster of pale green fluorite crystals from England. Most of the specimen is illuminated only by regular or incandescent light. However, the lower left side is illuminated by ultraviolet light. Notice the brilliant blue color of the fluorite is only seen where illuminated by ultraviolet light. The property of fluorescence was first observed in the 1850s from fluorite in the north of England. Many of our specimens are brightly colored and color can help identify some minerals. But in general, color must be used along with other physical characteristics to help identify a mineral. For instance, look at the quartz crystal from Arkansas on the right. It is colorless. On the left is a specimen of amethyst from Brazil. Both of these are samples of the same mineral, quartz. Amethyst is the purple variety of quartz that has tiny impurities of iron and manganese. Greeks gave amethyst that name thousands of years ago because they thought amethyst could protect its owner from drunkenness. In reality, quartz can be purple, colorless, or any color of the rainbow. The impurities plus natural radiation give amethyst its distinctive color. We are fortunate to display a 375 pound amethyst geode from Brazil. Geodes are a type of semi-rounded rock formation. This large Brazilian geode, also known as a cathedral, has been cut open to reveal stunning purple amethyst crystals. Also, a single white calcite crystal sits at the bottom of the cathedral. The open space is the partially filled remnant of a large fluid bubble in basalt, a type of volcanic rock. Silica-rich fluids deposited mostly quartz inside the bubble remnant. 
Amethyst is usually one of the last of the quartz minerals to form in these Brazilian geodes. If you look very closely at the gigantic amethyst geode, you will also see tiny gold flecked balls of the mineral cacoxonite that grew within the amethyst. California has both a state mineral and a state gemstone. On the right is the beautiful purplish blue mineral benitoite, which is California state gemstone. On the left is a pendant with faceted benitoite crystals. Benitoite is exceptionally rare, having been found only two places in the world. One is San Benito County, California. These and other spectacular California minerals are on display courtesy of the California Federation of Mineralogical Societies. The museum also possesses California state mineral gold, but we don't keep our gold nuggets on permanent display. They were found in Kern County's Mojave Desert region. Collectively, these placer nuggets weigh about 85 one hundredths of an ounce. Learn more about Kern County's historic mining areas in other Buena Vista Museum videos. Rubies are a variety of the mineral corundum. Did you ever wonder what a ruby looked like before it was cut into a beautiful stone and placed into a ring? We have a 15 karat ruby crystal from the United States premier ruby location in Western North Carolina and a ruby in green zoocyte from a commercial location in South Africa. Rarely mineral specimens form that are made of only one element. Above right is a photo of native copper from Calumet, Michigan. Native copper has a distinct orange-pink metallic color. Virtually all copper mined now is in minerals that possess a mix of copper, sulfur, oxygen, hydrogen, and other elements. Good examples of such oxidized copper are the azurite specimen from Arizona and the Atacamite crystal cola specimen from Chile. Iron rusts red and orange, but copper exposed to water and air, oxygen and hydrogen, rusts blue and green. This is why the Statue of Liberty and old copper pennies turn bluish green. Copper is commercially important because it possesses a very high thermal and electrical conductivity. Copper was mined as early as 5000 BC in Serbia, Iraq, and Egypt. Today, Chile, the United States, Indonesia, and Peru are the world's leading producers of this important element. One display case houses minerals donated by museum friends Dell and Peggy Fortner in memory of Helen Louise Jones. Buena Vista Museum is very fortunate to have these specimens. Pictured is a large one-of-a-kind specimen of selenite. Selenite is the transparent crystalline variety of the mineral gypsum. This specimen crystallized in a brackish water pond near San Francisco Bay. The selenite attached to reeds growing in the pond. As the pond water chemistry changed, the reeds died, but their finger shape was preserved by the selenite crystals. These remnant shapes can be seen by looking closely at the broken finger-like upward projections, such as in this photo. Each crystal is quite small and is needle-like. A fun way to learn about minerals is to go out and collect them. Here you see halite crystal collectors working at Searles Lake in the California desert. Halite is the mineral name for salt. Imagine turning over a lake bed rock and finding beautiful pink halite crystals like you see in the inset photo. Most mineral collectors try to clean and preserve their minerals as is, but some folks love to get into lapidary work. Lapidary is the cutting and polishing of rocks and minerals, crafting them into beautiful products such as jewelry, spheres, bookends, clocks, and other creative items. Thank you for viewing this video on minerals, and thanks to those folks who assisted in making this presentation. We invite you to visit Buena Vista Museum of Natural History and Science in Bakersfield, California, or visit our website 
to view more interesting videos at www.buenavistamuseum.org.